Today's lesson is 8.2, limiting reactants. So um, today's lesson, we are going to focus on um, limiting reactants. So in order to understand limiting reactants, you need to know how to do the stoichiometry because all the, um, um, the, the steps involved um, with a limiting reactant question um, is no different to doing a stoichiometry problem. However, there is um, one additional step. Um, and there's actually a little hint in a question that will let you know whether or not a limiting react, it is it considered a limiting reacting question or a stoichiometry question. So the work that we're doing in um, the stoichiometry um, that we, or that we did last class with the stoichiometry and the limiting reactant is really no different. But now what we're looking at is, what's referred to as the limiting reactant, okay? So we looked at this equation last class, okay? This is a simple uh, chemical equation comb combining nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas and to produce uh, ammonia gas. And we also looked at the, the coefficients that we use to balance a chemical equation um, are in mole ratios. So in this case, we've got one mole of uh, nitrogen uh, gas reacting with three moles of hydrogen gas, and finally with two moles of, or to produce two moles of ammonia gas. So that mole ratio is vital to let us know what exactly, um, or how much exactly are we in fact using. So now with, with the, the stoichiometry problems, you were typically given one unknown and one known. Okay, so you're given something, some value, and you're told to find the value of another compound, whether it be the two reactants or one reactant and a product, or even in fact both products. Right? It doesn't really matter where they uh, are in in a chemical equation. You can use any of them as long as you're using those mole ratios to figure out the new moles of that of some kind of unknown substance, whether it be one of the reactants or one of the products. Now, the term limiting reactant implies something runs out. So understand that in this ratio, only if we have exactly one mole of nitrogen gas reacting with exactly three moles of hydrogen gas, will you produce exactly two moles of ammonia gas as the balanced chemical equation states. So that will not work um, if those numbers um, are not exact. And typically in chemistry, you're, you never really use exact values. Okay, you never really use exact values. Um, so understand that in, in, in a lab scenario, something is going, to, um, is going to run out first. Okay, so that's really what the limiting reactant is, is understanding that something is going to run out. So reactants are said to be present in stoichiometric amounts when they are present in a mole ratio that corresponds exactly to the mole ratio predicted by the balanced chemical equation. Okay, so just because this equation we have one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen doesn't necessarily mean we have so much more hydrogen. Okay, um, understand that we these numbers, right, really, they just kind of relate to um, the moles that are being used. Their masses play a very big role in these moles. And those masses can, will vary, right? Because every, every atom in the periodic table has got a, its own mass, right? And if you think about something, even though we've got a lot of hydrogen here, understand that its mass is also relatively low in comparison to something like nitrogen that has a molar mass of 14.01, okay, or actually, should I say uh, 28.02 because it's N2, um, and as opposed to uh, 2.02 grams per mole for one um, 
uh, hydrogen um, uh, molecule. Okay. Um, one thing that I, I, I did forget to state um, last class, and, I, and no one's kind of questioned it, um, is, uh, oh, my audio is cutting. Are others getting that as well? If people can comment uh, in the chat, please, uh, just so I know that, uh, that others are getting that issue. Uh, so, um, so one of the things when we're calculating the molar mass, okay, um, the molar mass of a compound, we never use the coefficient that we use to balance to calculate the molar mass. Okay, so remember that that's that is vital. The, 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 the number used to balance the molar mass is never to be used in calculating the molar mass. Never. Okay. Well, now I'm here, I just heard an echo. Uh, unless it's one of your audios that uh, I'm getting. Um, so let's uh, move on. So take for example here, uh, here's an equation um, uh, for cellular respiration. Okay, so we've got glue. So imagine something that you've eaten today uh, that contains glucose. You're breathing in oxygen, um, and in the in return, you're producing um, energy in the form of ATP. But don't worry about the ATP. Only those bio students will worry about. Let those bio students can worry about the ATP. Um, it produces carbon dioxide and water. So if you look at this formula here, okay, of glucose reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water, think just naturally which one of these reactants is going to run out first, right? Think about it, right? We've got glucose and we've got oxygen that we breathe in. Okay, clearly the glucose that you eat, right, the food that you ingest, that is gonna run out first, okay? If oxygen runs out, we've got a big pro bigger problem, <laughs> okay? Um, so glucose is gonna run out first. Okay, which means that glucose in this example, and this is a, 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 a perfect example um, that to, to use just because, you know, it, it, it's a chemical reaction that takes place and we never really calculate this. But knowing that oxygen is never going to run out okay, unless we're in a vacuum. Okay, um, but in this case, it's the glucose that's going to run out, which means that glucose is considered the limiting reactant. It's going to be the compound that runs out first, okay? Um, and the, re the reactant that is left over is considered the reactant that is in excess, okay? Um, if you're doing any Google searching on this topic um, to get extra help, um, understand that it does go under the term limiting reagent and excess reagent, okay? I use the term reactant, no different to reagent. Okay, some you know some books will refer to them as reactants, others reagents. Um, so just know that they're interchangeable. It's the same thing. Okay, so if you are um, going outside of my resources to find material, um, you may find it as limiting reagent. It's no different. Okay. So um, when you're given amounts of two or more reactants. To solve a stoichiometric problem, you first need to identify the limiting reactant. Okay, so you're gonna you want to find out how much. So to calculate the limiting reactant, you're gonna be given the masses of all your reactants. So if there are two reactants, you'll be given two masses. Remember, in the stoichiometry problems, you were only given one mass and being asked to find something else. But in a limiting reactant question, the hint is this you will, if you have two reactants, you'll be given a mass for both of them. If you've got three reactants, you'll be given a mass of all three. And with those masses, you will calculate the number of moles. Now, you're gonna use that table to create the, the, the mole ratios of whatever product you're being asked to find. And you want to see which one will produce the least amount of possible product. Okay, this is the, the, so you're trying to, so you're using that table, so you're using the mole ratios 
to find, to figure out how much product can be made. And it's based on the least amount of product that, um, that is made. Okay, and you'll see that in our uh, in our sample problem. Okay, um, so here are uh, two sample problems uh, that we are going to take up. Um, you'll notice if if you're going through the slides, um, you I don't know if you you you've looked closely, but um, for part one uh, question one a, um, I did this answer. Uh, using two different um, two different ways, okay, uh, to calculate my limiting reactant, but they both turn out to being the exact same limiting reactant, and you'll understand what I mean uh, by that when we when I actually show you the calculations um, for this problem. But hey, let's uh, let's read this here. So we've got lithium nitride reacts with water to form ammonia and lithium hydroxide. If 4.87 grams of lithium nitride reacts with 5.80 grams of water. Look at that. I've given you two masses, and both of those masses are based on your reactants in this chemical equation. If you look back at the stoichiometry questions from last class, 8.1, the stoichiometry only gave you one mass if in fact it was a mass some of the earlier ones just gave you the number of moles but typically you're given one mass and you're asked to find the mass of something else but in a limiting reactant the hint is you're given two masses and using those two masses you've got to figure out which one of those two is going to produce the least amount of that product okay so you've got the two reactants here forming some product or another product and i'll just have the one finger so we know that we're picking the one product We've got two reactants to produce, and we're trying to figure out of these two, which one is gonna produce the least amount of product in the end, okay? Uh, so we're gonna find the limiting reactant, uh, and then eventually calculate the mass of both of the products. Typically, I don't ask for, for this. Typically on tests, um, I, I do ask for the limiting reactant, but I will be very specific at, in, in, let's say, a part B. I would not say find of both products, I typically ask for one possible product, keep things simple. Uh, I don't need to see you do the same calculation for a second product, okay? Um, and then finally here in question number two, uh, white phosphorus produce, um, consists of a molecule made up of four phosphorus atoms. It burns in pure oxygen to produce tetraphosphorus decoxide. A 1.00 gram piece of phosphorus is burned in a flask filled with 2.60 times 10 to the 23 molecules of oxygen. What mass of uh, P4O10 is produced? So notice here, I don't give you two masses. I give you one mass, but I give you the big N, so the entity of the other reactant. Using the entity of the other reactant, using Avogadro's constant, we could find the number of moles. Okay, and we'll see that as we uh, we take this up. So let's look at the um, the uh, sample problem one a and the answers to one a. Okay, so here we have uh, the equation, um, and so as we said with stoichiometry, step number one: write the balanced chemical equation. Okay, so here we have the balanced chemical equation. Okay, um, and then we're listing the masses, and I like to put I, I like to list all the values right underneath. Now, the only value I've given you in this question is the mass, 4.87 grams and 5.80 grams, okay? Now, because you know formulas, you're able to calculate, to figure out a formula of a compound, you will be required to find the molar masses. Again, just a reminder, you're using my periodic table. So please have my periodic table handy um, uh, next week for the test. Anyhow, so we find the molar masses. Again, notice this molar mass, 18.02 grams. It has nothing to do with this three in the, in the balancing. Okay, that three only affects the ratios. It does not ever affect the molar mass of a compound. So remember, make note of that, write that somewhere, put that in a little sticky next to your laptop um, or your notes for the test to remind you that, hey, 
don't use those coefficients to create your molar mass, okay? You'll never use it for your molar mass, the coefficient in front. You use the subscripts because it's part of the formula. This three, that changes from compound to compound. But if you were to, let's say, Google search, okay, uh, the molar mass of water, okay, it, it you, you're never asked to find that of three coefficients or three waters. It's typically, it's always just of one water, okay? So understand that the molar mass is based on the compound itself and not by the numbers we use to balance. So anyhow, to calculate the number of moles, we divide little m by big M. Okay, and I like to list it in this order because that's really mathematically what it does, right? Little m on top of big M, which means I'm dividing this number by this number to get this number here, the number of moles. Now, we don't look at those two moles and go, oh, this one's considered limiting. We don't know if it's limiting, right? We want to see of these moles, how much possible product can they make, okay? So in, I end up doing, so you end up doing two tables. Um, if you find old videos of me doing this limiting react and I did it one bigger table of all of them, but I, I kind of, you know, moved away from that and you'll see even in my homework, uh, questions and, and the answers, uh, in my answer keys that I do this. So we do two sets of ratios. The first ratio I, and in this case, I picked lithium hydroxide. Nowhere in this question does it state which product. So I picked one product. Okay, um, and, and if you look at part B, I, I'm not specific to a product. Okay, part B, I ask you to find the masses of both. So what we do here um, in, in this, and I, and I, and I, I, I do it for, the, 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 for this again, you'll see what I mean, because in the second time that I answer this, um, I'm doing it using ammonia. Okay, um, so typically on a test, I might say, okay, uh, here are the numbers for the reactants. These are the masses for the reactants. How much uh, lithium hydroxide are you going to produce? So in order to do that, you need to find the limiting reactant because I'm given two masses. Which one of these masses and their moles is going to give me the least amount of possible product? And the product here we're using in this slide is lithium hydroxide. So here we have lithium hydroxide and the is our unknown. That's what we're trying to find. That's the product. And our given, in this case, we're using lithium nitride. In this other one, um, it's water. Um, I'm just going to pause for a moment. If someone's getting some audio issues. Am I getting any, uh, is there anyone else having audio issues? If someone can respond, can, someone can say, uh, yes, no. Okay, so someone just responded saying no. Uh, so if you could uh, take a moment and um, uh, maybe turn off or and uh, yes, I just someone else is saying no. Audio is all good um, from several members. Uh, so my be best bet would be maybe to try turning off, um, logging off, and then log back in again. Sorry. Um, Thank you to those who responded. Um, anyhow, um, where was I? So we are doing the table. We're trying to find the mole ratios, okay, of my of one of the products and using the given. So notice here, the bottom are given is in this case is lithium nitride. In this case, it's wa it's water. So again, same thing, same rules apply. Use those numbers, right? This number should be fresh in your calculator times three divided by one will give me this many moles of lithium hydroxide. Now, if we do the same thing, but now using the other reactant, we're using the other reactant, we're using water in this case, okay? Water and, our, and, the, and, and, and the product that we're trying to figure out will produce a smaller number of moles. Okay, so notice the number of moles that lithium nitride made of lithium hydroxide and what water made of lithium hydroxide. So this reactant made this much product. This reactant can only make this much product, which means that once water runs out, we will only 
we are only capable of making this many moles of lithium hydroxide because water will run out. We cannot make this amount, right? So lithium nitride, lithium nitride cannot make this amount because water will in fact run out before it has the ability to make that. Okay, so it, it, it's not capable of reaching this number of moles. So the limiting reactant is water in this case. So water is gonna run out because it produces the least amount of lithium hydroxide mole. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same work, but in this example, we use lithium hydroxide. Let's see if it did the same thing with, if we picked uh, ammonia as our product. And again, just let me repeat, you're typically not doing for, for both. Okay, in some practice problems, you might be asked to do that in some, some of the homework questions, just to give you practice. And practice, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to practice these, these questions, especially since I've got answer keys that are fully detailed, just like these answer keys in, in the sample problems for you to follow along. Okay, uh, another thing to note before we move to the second way of figuring out the limiting reactant, uh, if we we're using a different product, um, notice I didn't write the entire number, but notice I wrote that dot, dot, dot method. Okay, that dot, dot, dot method implies I've not rounded yet. Okay, because we don't round until the very end. And in fact, here, we're just being asked to find the limiting reactant. Okay, um, so this is the limiting reactant. You want to state that that's the limiting reactant because that is one of the marks. Okay, so one of the marks in, in a limiting reactant question is actually stating which one is the limiting reactant. Okay, if I see you just do this and not find this and say this is the limiting reactant, I'm going to be like, well, how do you know if you've not calculated that of the other... Um, of the other reactant, okay? So remember, we add a lot more water based on the coefficients, one lithium nitride as opposed to three, okay? But the end result stated that water was the limiting reactant. Anyhow, let's use ammonia as our, um, as the product of reference, okay? So now notice here, our unknown is ammonia. Okay, our unknown is ammonia. Again, same thing. This part is no different as we did in the previous slide. But now the only difference is the unknown that we're using here is, um, um, is ammonia as opposed to lithium hydroxide that we used in the other one. Okay, so um, we do the comparison again. We go, hey, let's see how much lithium nitride will make or how much ammonia is made by lithium nitride. Lithium nitride will make this many moles of ammonia. <coughs> However, water, on the other hand, will only make this many moles of ammonia. So it, so water will make the least amount of possible ammonia, which means this reaction will stop creating these two products once water runs out in this system of this chemical reaction. So combining these two, once water runs out, water can only make a certain amount of moles of that product in this example, okay? So in this case, we've proved that water, yes, is in fact the limiting reactant, but it will produce, it will always produce the least number of moles. The number of moles here don't match in like to this slide, okay? So we look at this slide. But remember, this slide, the previous slide that I was showing you, the answers, is based on um, lithium hydroxide being the product. But in the second slide of the same question, 1A, right, we are using the ammonia product to calculate which ones are limiting reactants. Okay, so uh, step question B, right, question B now asks to calculate the mass of both of the products. Now you need, okay, so if we're trying to find the, the of both products, Oops. So going back, the uh, molar mass of, um, of ammonia, we want to have the molar mass of lithium hydroxide. And we take, okay, we take here the moles of our lowest value that we calculated. Okay. So the moles of our lowest value that we calculated and 
we multiply that, right? So th notice here, this here is the lowest number of moles of possible ammonia made. And this here is the lowest possible moles of um, lithium hydroxide that can be made. So we're using those moles with the molar mass of the compound to find the mass of the possible products. Okay, so understand that we need to do that, that step. Okay, typically on a test, I would only ask you, you know, find this product or find this product. I typically don't ask for you to find um, the masses of two products. Okay, using these steps. Um, they're, they're usually just of one. Okay, um, so in this case, we're using, right, so here um, for ammonia, right, that was the, the, the lowest value. Okay, so let's go back to that slide here. See there, there it is. There's that lowest value. We are carrying over that lowest value in its entirety because we were never rounding anything here. Notice here, nothing's been rounded based on significant digits because we are only being asked to find which one is the limiting reactant, okay? Which means technically, if you wanted, you could include this number as a dot, 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 because this question does not ask me for calculate the number of moles, okay? So I don't ask you to calculate the number of moles. So I'm not asking you to round anything. So you, I wrote the whole number so that you can compare it to what you're calculating. But when you're writing this out in your steps, and you'll see it in, even in some of my homework, in the homework questions, I don't include all the numbers. I include the dot, dot, dot and say, hey, here are the, you know, this is the limiting reactant. Here are my two values. This value is less than this value. So this, in fact, is the limiting reactant. I don't need to show the, the whole number, but I need to use the whole number to help me calculate my molar mass, or sorry, the mass of that possible product. Okay, so notice here this dot, 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 I carry over um, to give me, because I don't want to be rounding this and then rounding this because this will, will change, okay? Uh, remember that um, this final answer, if it's off from mine, it's, you know, you're, you're going to lose, um, you're going to lose marks because your rounding's in incorrect, um, not to mention that you're going to be losing marks, as I mentioned, um, for, um, for rounding before the end. Okay, do not round until the very end where you need to give me a final value. And notice this final value is based on three significant digits. Okay, let's look at the last sample problem here. Okay, so here we have um, white phosphorus. As it says, it's made up of a four phosphorus atom. So the formula for a four phosphorus atom is P4 plus Oxygen, O2, oxygen is one of the diatomics, produces P4O10. Okay. So um, we're given the mass of phosphorus, one gram. We're given the entities of oxygen. So yes, I don't give you a mass, but you could find, remember the overarching theme in stoichiometry is find little n, find the number of moles. So in this case, how do I find the number of moles for oxygen? How do I find the number of moles for phosphorus based on what I'm given? So in this case, I'm using the um, little m over big M to give me a mole value. And in this case, um, to find the number of moles, I am dividing um, the entities by the Avogadro constant to give me those number of moles. So now there's only one product here, which is perfect. Okay. So that product is our unknown. We want to figure out which one of these two is going to make the least number of moles of this one product. So in this case, phosphorus is going to make this many moles of P4O10. Okay. Um, oxygen, on the other hand, is going to make this many moles of P4O10, which means in this case, the phosphorus is our limiting reactant, okay? So this value is our limiting reactant, right? Because this value here, this number here that we just calculated, it's not these two values that you're looking. It's how you use the ratios and get the two sets of moles. 
and then you compare these two numbers to see which value is the smallest, which means that once phosphorus, the P4, is going to run out once we make this many moles of P4O10. Right? So oxygen will not have anything more. And don't be fooled by the, the fact that, oh, well, it's oxygen. Oxygen is, you know, is, is the one always in excess. Okay, remember that it's based on the calc. I need to see the calculation. So please never give me, oh, P4 is the limiting reactant because oxygen never runs out. You've got to show me those calculations. Okay, we use that example of, of cellular respiration as an example. Okay, just because it, it's something that we can kind of figure out without doing any calculations. But I want to know based on the actual calculations of what is given. Because remember, sometimes oxygen could be a limiting reactant in, 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 in a chemical reaction. Okay, because if you're in a closed system in, in specifically, right, you could be limited with the amount of oxygen that's present. Anyhow, you take this full value here, right, you multiply it by the molar mass of our product and we get a mass of 2.2915 and all that grams okay notice here moles cross out grams is the unit that i have left over um and so i include the grams as my final answer uh you'll see i i like to include units um in my steps um but uh, i understand students don't uh remember um I expect to at least see units in your final, final answer, okay? And yes, there is marks deducted if your units are wrong. That's why I let the units talk to you, okay? Notice here, moles, grams per mole. Oh, moles, cross out, all I'm left with is grams. See, by including it, I know, right, what my units are um, uh, for my end result. Okay, and again, um, we're using the least number of significant digits in the question. Three significant digits uh, are the is the value um, in our question. Okay, and that's um, limiting reactants. I hope you liked this video. If you did, do not be shy to hit that thumbs up button. And while you're clicking the thumbs up, Click on that subscribe to stay tuned to my new videos. Thanks for watching.